Hey, welcome everybody. Um, I'm going to give you a brief introduction to um, video modular today. So we're going to cover the basics and um, yeah, like a little introduction to this uh, crazy world. I'm Fanta, by the way. I'm a, a visual developer here in Berlin. I'm from from South Spain, but live here since already few years and I work mostly developing software for um, artists and designers and studios and agencies that kind of um, that kind of thing but then on my free time I like to play as a VJ play some visuals play, play for, for musicians and for a long while I was using my own software to do that and that was fine that was a lot of fun of course because I have all the control on it but then um, I started to look into these systems where you have a limited set of options. That's what is in front of you. That's what you have to play with. And it kind of brings the best out of you or the worst. You never know. But, um, but it's fun to play anyway. And I'll g I'm going to show you how I do that and what are the basics, the, the most important things to understand about it. Uh, thanks to Schneider Sladen and to Mikel for bringing me here sure. and I hope you had fun. Um, so I have a question for you guys. Uh, are you familiar with modular audio? Uh, like raise your hand if you are. Like you know more or less what's a CV signal and what's an audio signal and the difference between them. Yeah? More or less everybody? Cool. So I will use that as a base to start the rest. So if you don't know that uh, right now, raise your hand and I will explain quick. And if not, we can just get into it. Is that cool? Nice. Okay. Um, I'm going to show you what I have here so everybody understand what's going on. I have on one, on this system here, some audio, a patch that Mikel created that is generating audio uh, randomly and by itself so it's just running on the side i have the input to the video system and then i distribute that signal across right so you can see now for example in that uh image that is going to be up here here yeah that one some of those sounds being translated into into video so you hear those low notes and they get uh, translated as blue right now and i can at any given time if i remember where i patched that i can turn it into red for example right i'm going to show you how we do that the basic principle is uh, the same as in audio modular that we have uh, voltages going through cables and those voltages uh, are affecting different parts of the image okay the image uh, in most of modular um, no right now every modular video system is going through what we have here this you remember these old guys cinch uh, RCA that's um, that's where the video uh, where you had the VCR at home and I was connected to your TV that was a signal that was um, going from one system to the other right and that uh, is what I'm going to explain to you the first thing because that's in I think the the um, the little thing that brings most of the issues uh, when you try to understand these uh, systems. Why is that needed? And sometimes I have it, sometimes I don't have it. Why is that so? Uh, what's happening in, in that cable, it's um, this one. I you see that uh, yellow, right? You remember that? So what is going there inside normally is uh, both synchronization and also the image itself. That's um, the same as you have now in, in an HDMI cable. You have uh, everything, the data and the synchronization because uh, the image, uh, to be able to draw that image, 
you need to know when and where, right? So that's going through that uh, cable. So when you have three systems that I have right now, and you want to um, show the image of uh, all of them at the same time, you have um, three options, two options, sorry. You have, yeah, there you go. That's one system, this is this here, this is that there, and this one is the small that you don't see right now, but it's here in the back. The simple way to mix signals coming out of these um, RCA cables is to use a video mixer. We have one here. You can get uh, very cheap online in eBay right now. And uh, that takes care of all synchronization and image and makes the blending. The other way is to synchronize one system to the other. If you know MIDI, raise your hand if you know MIDI. Yeah, right. So you have the idea of a master clock and then all the slaves, right? So we have the same here. We have modules um, like this one here, for example, this small one red on the top left corner. That one is able to get an, um, three signals, one for red, one for green, and one for blue, and convert it into um, our uh, composite, this one is called composite video. And that's the one that you can now send to the video system and display on the screen. So that's the basic idea of uh, modular video. You have uh, RCA as a signal to go to your output, and in between you have um, uh, voltage control, right? Did I explain myself in that one? So the, the important thing there, or, or, the, or the amazing thing that these guys created, um, the guys from LCX, was realizing that, that you don't really need to um, convert or treat the RCI, uh, the composite signal. You can get it into a module, split it, get on one hand synchronization, and the color signal on the other hand. And that one is very similar to Eurorack, and we can just use Eurorack standard um, modules to deform, generate, amplify, whatever you want to do with the signal. And then at the end of the chain, put it back together into composite, right? Cool. Questions? All good. So we have our signal, RCA, coming from a camera, coming from a small device like this one, this um, semi-modular um, system. You have that signal, get it into your Eurorack, split it into um, sync, synchronization. We forget about synchronization for a second. We just leave it on the side. And then we have the signals that are Eurorack standard that we can uh, generate. For example, um, this system here, it's generating that little image that you see. So I'm using a um, audio oscillator, a Doppler audio oscillator. I'm sending the audio output to the uh, red color in, gets cascaded into uh, green and blue and we have one um, white image. So if you think about um, audio oscillation, we see there like a square wave, this guy here, square wave getting translated into video. Can you see that? Really fast and really slow. Yeah, so that's the basics of generating um, an image. That will be the same as generating audio. The only thing is that we have that special module that is able to translate. It's not even translated, it's just putting it together for the standard of um, composite signal. And it just gets out. Right? So in that sense, we can connect anything 
that we won over there, for example. Oh, that's making some noise. So no, I'm going not going to do that. But this here. I want to. That yes. Okay. Well, let's fix um, the concept there with that one signal. So I have again um, VCO uh, voltage control oscillator that is generating this square wave that goes from one volt, ten volts, whatever to zero, and it switches right. That's what we see. Zero volts, one volt, zero, one. And then, um, in the same idea of a panning mixer in audio, where you send to the left speaker the signal or to the right speaker, we have the same concept here, but we send the signal to um, red, green, and blue. Can you see the colors? Almost, right? <coughs> no. So, depending on where you send your signal, you get different colors. Basically, the same principle as sending your signal to the left speaker or to the right speaker. Yep. And then everything in between. So you have mixers, so you can um, take another signal. Let's take one from from the video, another oscillator, and mix it there. Now I have uh, sent this um, oscillator to the blue. The audio oscillator is going to the red. And you have two images superimposed, one on top of the other. That you can do also with a real mixer or real video mixer like this one. And now we will have instead of two separate images in two different channels, one for red, one for blue. Now I'm mixing both together into, into one. That's why. Make sense? You following? Cool. And then, um, yeah, I guess that's important to to know. First, what we said about uh, synchronization. You need to to make your system go together in the same in the same tempo in the same clock that you get through RCA then how you make colors. So there's some modules that are good for colorizing, like uh, this one here, Visual Cortex is like the main main module that LCX had and has these three knobs here for red, green, and blue. They w uh, and through them, you will give some colors to the image. So it's that idea of a matrix mixer that will send different inputs to different outputs. Um, those are the main difference. Then another difference between audio and video modules is um, the voltage. Uh, video audio modules have a very different voltage. You have from unipolar that goes from zero to ten, bipolar minus ten, ten, zero five. There's uh, a little bit of everything. In video, you only have from zero to one volt. The reason for that was. Um, that there's something, don't remember the name right now, but there's uh, some chips that uh, when you go from one voltage to the next, it takes some time to reach when you send. And if it's from zero to 10, that time was really fast for video, so you will get blurry images. So they decided to go from zero to one, because when you go from zero to one, those chips adapt really fast. So you can you can get um, sharp images. So that's another, um, another difference. How you solve that, how 
am I able to use audio uh, signals in my video module? If the audio coming out from this uh, module here is 10 volts, well, mostly you have uh, attenuators that you use, and then there's also especially some modules that they have, um, for example, bridge here has an input, and then it has a switch, a small switch. I don't know if you are able to see that. Yeah. It says plus five, zero, minus, uh, divided by five. So if you send five volts there and switch to divided by five, you will get one volt output. So it's translating between regular error rack and video error rack, or the other way around, between uh, video error rack to uh, normally we run. There's another one, there's a do it yourself here, you don't see that one right now. To to do the same thing that is fixed. You just build it for either divide by five or multiplied by five. And then yeah, that was an, the, the the topic of voltages. So very very good. And then I want to show you also something um, important or interesting in my opinion like if we send that signal from the from the video module from the audio module into this guy over here star case and then we get the output of that one you get something interesting this um, module what is that? It's kind of uh, the net effect is that it's multiplying the lines, right? Before we just had um, where am I? one black line. Now we have many of them. What it's doing is multiplying the frequency. And if you know a bit, a bit about audio modules, that's a wave shaper. So it will fold the wave into itself so it will create more spikes and more uh, valleys and the net result is that that you can now shape <coughs> sorry you can now create uh, from one um, one single uh, line you can create many right Another thing that is um, different from the video world to the audio world are ramps. This is a kind of um, uh, is this guy here. Let's make it easy. With yeah, there you see um, a gradient. It goes from fully white to almost black on the side, right? <coughs> Sorry, you see it there. Fully white, that means one volt. Almost black, that means zero volt. That doesn't make any sense in audio world. If you think about it, that would be like a like a fixed tone, maybe for drones or something like this. But this is like a fixed frequency that is just fixed to the frequency that the screen has. We didn't talk about synchronization to not make it the hardest, so don't don't get um, crazy about uh, over there, but that's that's the um, that's the idea. So we have um, there you have it from white to black. But that's very interesting to work with because if now um, we go with that gradient into the wave shaper, we are multiplying the frequency. So now we can make many lines from one single fixed frequency. And then if we change um, the type, we can start to play with, with that. And of course, animate it. I'm missing uh, animation modulation. I'm going to, s it's very static, the image right now. I'm just going to make it move.
So this is what we had one second ago. This um, gradient that we folded, we wave shape it, and now I'm mixing it with the with one oscillator coming from the video, right? So I'm making the mix, and now I have some distortion going on. And I can adjust the speed of it. So it's the same idea as um, using audio modules. Now you have to only you have to understand that these modules are working in a different way, and they do their bases based on the same principles inside, but they behave different because um, the nature of the signal itself. So what can I show you next? Like how I do use it, or do you have any questions? Yeah. Uh, star case, this this guy over here. Yeah, that's a, in audio world. That's a wave shaper. In um, um, LCX had a module just for that. This one is called star case. I don't know if you can read that. And in bridge, no, in arc there's another one there's fix is another module that and I have then you added the animation or the yeah the animation I added uh, can we see the image here for a second the animation I added by um, I can show you just that one this is the oscillator coming from here so it's just lines moving up and then I mix that one with this image and when you mix them you have the lines from before going up and the black from here yeah and the shape where is the shape coming from from which one the shape so i have two shapes right now i have this one wow. and i have that one so one is moving up and it goes from from white to black and then right and then the other one what did i do yeah when you mix them you have the one that is moving plus the one that was fixed these lines and they get deformed one by the other that's the way you mix so when it's sharp, it's uh, squares. Yeah. You, um, if we check the original, yeah. I mean, if it's uh, not a fade, it's sharp from white to black, and then there will be uh, squares that move. All oh, right. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah. Um, you mean like this? Sorry, like this. So we had before a sine wave. Let me show you that one individually. We have a sine wave, so it goes smoothly up and down. We have a triangle that's similar, and then we have a square wave. This one that goes uh, instantly from one volt to zero volts. And then um, depending how we modulate them, uh, I mean, what the one we choose for the modulation, then we got a different kind of shape. Right? So what we can do is, for example, take two of those, like the one that was soft, um, the sine wave, and then I get the um, square wave. I'm going to mix them together. And the output of that is what I'm going to use for the modulation. So now we have a mix of sine plus square. And depending how I mix that, 
we have a different shape that we can play with. So right now here, the only thing we have is one oscillator. Sorry, that is running free um, to the uh, app, and one fixed oscillator. Those ramps, they're called ramps. Is this um, gradient? The gradient is being distorted by the wave shaper, and then when mixing those in the in the way we mix, we get a different image. So now I can just mix everything together and look for something that is interesting to me. Changing the frequency, I can oh, I can lock it. It's not running anymore. Up and down. Or making it super fast, so it just become noise. Yeah. So those will be like the main sources of um, shapes that we're using. Um, so oscillators, like in the same as in audio, um, and ramps. The next thing will be to use a camera. Like you can get cameras into it. And then you'll need a special module that is a decoder that will get you a signal. That is the one you can use. And I didn't bring any camera today. That's not uh, my workflow. But that's something you can you can use. You can extract the image, the black and white image from the camera, and use it in your signal. Use that for modulate, wave shape that, so you have a lot of ripples in your face. And then the next thing, and that's why this audio is, is still here, is the, the fourth source of, um, of um, signal that I use is uh, audio itself. So what I do a lot is just sending, this is short. Mm? A long cable, yeah. The resolution is, is PAL or NTSC, so it's uh, 476, so 475, 576 for PAL. Uh, no, no um, what we were um, talking before was ways to do that. So in this system, no, the one we currently have, there's a new module or more than a module like um, a semi-modular um, um, device coming up, the Cro-Magnon. It's going to be actually in Superbooth. They're going to exhibit it in Superbooth. And that one will go to up to HD, but not this one that I have. And what people use right now is, you have many options. So one will be to use a, a scalar, that's called. So you have a small signal, then you have a device that upscale your image to another resolution that uh, you can use because there's from 30 euros to 2000, so you have the whole range with very cheap and low quality to very high. Then you have um, capture devices that you connect to a computer, it will take the signal, record it in your computer, or the computer can uh, then take the output to uh, monitor, uh, projector, whatever. Or what uh, a lot of people use in live um, performances is have like a little small TV or monitor. The best ones are the Sony Trinitron and then have a 4K or an HD camera pointing at the screen. That would be like an analog upscale because there you have all the colors coming from a real uh, CRT monitor, from, from a real electron beam. That's what um, bass guitar players do with the microphone in front of the amplifier, right? That's the same idea. You have the amplifier that gives you the real tone that you want, and then you capture that. So it's the same, the same principle. So let's connect the audio right now. So right now, where are you sending your output? Uh, right now in my output, uh, that one that you see, I have um, one oscillator 
in square wave, that's the one that's making the um, ho uh, horizontal lines very sharp. And then I have um, a ramp coming from here. Yeah, that, like that up that we can see. Yeah. Where, where, you, where, where is the final destination of that to be translated to this screen? Oh, right. Um, it's coming to a video mixer that I have here so I can switch between the three systems. That one is the one that's making the upscale. I have a Roland video mixer that's making the upscale, sending out HDMI, and then we're mixing it with the camera view fields and everything so you can see. Yeah. That's the question? What was yeah. that question? Yeah. Okay. And now I have the audio coming from that um, guy over there that you can hear this uh, evolving patch or generative patch. And now I can connect, oh, yeah. I can connect that directly, for example, and you can hear purely how, but um, let's make it even more clear. I'm going to connect it to, let me change everything for a second. Uh, that's the one. All right. Did I make it right? Yeah. Okay, I connected another oscillator. This this time it's vertical, right? Let's make it square like before. All right, and now what I can do is connect the audio to that guy to make frequency modulation, right? So what this is doing is what you've seen everywhere. So I have here, you've seen it, don't lie, yeah. It's, a, it's the representation of the weight, one to one you see the frequencies being like the vertical oscillator being modulated by the si audio signal. And that's something I play a lot with actually in, in real life scenario. I just like how, how responsive it is and how you can just see. I mean, this is not, not just like this, a little bit elaborated, but yeah. And then you can, of course, that's an audio signal, so you can do whatever you want with it in the audio world. For example, you can use um, a um, equalizer. So I'm now just getting the bass. So it's not that uh, spiky as before because I filtered the, um, the high tones, these guys. I took them out and now I'm just representing the very oh, the very low base. Would the filter work something similarly? Uh, yeah, this is now audio world, so anything that you do with the audio, you will see it. why is that switching? No. Whoop. Anything that you do with the audio will be represented in the video. Another thing you can do is, I don't know, uh, this guy is starting to behave. Um, use an envelope follower. So I'm not using the audio, I'm checking the audio and making a signal that doesn't have the frequency of the audio, but the shape of the audio. So when it hits, it moves the whole image at once. Right. Yep. And now so you can make that modulation for example. Questions so far?
This one is I'm getting around 600 hertz. If I'm going to 40 hertz, and I'm just showing instead of many lines of the of the oscillator, I'm just lowering the frequency of the oscillator. It's very down, and then how much the audio is modulating, frequency modulating that guy, then I can get very subtle. And reactive um, elements on screen. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I use uh, many audio modules and I mean not many but a few of them to generate um, um, signals not to process process them because the audio signals the audio modules because this audio tends to work between um, in a range of frequencies that the one we hear. You don't need to have an audio module that can go up to one megahertz because you, we cannot hear that, right? So most of the modules don't use internally elements that have that bandwidth because they are cheaper to produce. The video modules, they need um, internal chips that they can go up to 40 Four megahertz, I think, is the the tip, the limit, and those are more expensive. So that, that's why many video modules that uh, create or perform simpler tasks, like a uh, color mixer. Um, how much does a matrix mixer cost in audio? I don't know. One hundred. One hundred fifty. One hundred fifty. So in in video goes to three hundred. It's almost the double. So are there other interfaces that? Come again? Uh, are there any interfaces that uh, make uh, make the transformation from from the modules from the audio modules to, to the video? Uh, yeah, frequency? I mean, yeah. One thing is that that you can, for example, just use modulation from audio. That's something I do. Um, voltage control modulation or audio modulation to video. The other thing is, one second, what we saw before here with the multiples. Once you have the, um, the signal, you can convert the amplitude, making it five times lower, five times bigger, so you can translate between the two worlds. Other thing that you can do is check um, with the um, with the person that created the module. For example, this one here. I don't know if I can show you. This not really. I don't know how to show you that. One second. This one with the LED blinking lights. Zero one. You see on the top uh, left. Yeah, that's a module created for audio. Uh, from SSSR labs but internally the chip that they use can handle video so someone uh, discovered that posted it in the forums and said hey we can actually use that one for video uh, another thing we do sometimes as well is uh, take um, simple audio modules and exchange the chips for example I have here a Befaco mixer and uh, it's a do-it-yourself um, mixer and I just bought a different chip, the one, the op operational amplifier that makes the, the, first tape, the um, amplifies the signal. That one, I changed it for one that I know that works for video and now suddenly it's a video module. Both, can do both actually, audio and video. And um, yes, uh, like this uh, sloth from nonlinear circuits, I wrote them and I said, hey, how can I make it so that it outputs one volt instead of 10? They said, change this resistor for that value. Now it works. So talking to people is actually working a lot. Um, more questions? Something you want to see? Do you have a specific work uh, workflow, workflow to generally, like, do you separate the audio that you're getting from other artists? 
you separate like like the bands? Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. Or do you get like the the whole. Um, no, I separated. I separated. That's um, there's one module. I'm going to exchange this. Um, this, by the way, that's the system we have here in Schneider Sladen, or they have here to in in exposition. Uh, can you say that? Right. Was here this week for the for this, but it will come back to the to the exhibition. And um, this is the one I use. Um, let me try to take it. Should I take, take, take this yeah. out? Yep. Yeah. Okay. okay. I lost the video signal. Oh. Uh, yeah. Yeah. There? <coughs> okay. Thank you, my friend. Jeez, no worries. Oh. The nice. audio. Okay. We are, or we should be back in track right now, right? You see that one? Yeah, cool. That's the one I use. And here, for example, in this corner, behind all those cables that you don't see, almost nothing, right? I have a multiples, and that's the audio coming in. So I have the audio on the corner coming from, from, from the patch Mikkel created, this one. And then I have many outputs of that one, so I can redistribute it to many places. And right next to it, there's uh, what they called in LCX world the sensory translator, which is a very handy module because it has an audio input, but also a microphone. This little thing is an electric microphone, so I can turn on the microphone and hear the um, audience clapping or whatever. And what it does is splitting the audio signal in different uh, bands. So I have 40 hertz here in yellow, 16 hertz, no, 160 in blue, and then I have 640, uh, different bands. So I can um, select the bass as we did before and just show that. I can select just the highs. I can find maybe if I'm lucky that the hi-hats just pass exactly in that band and then I can use that and then um, I play mostly with that yeah that's basically my signal sometimes I use oscillators to what we did before to translate from vertical to horizontal and that kind of things but mostly I just do audio visualization like this one that was running a second ago let's make one from scratch Let's do something fun. So I'm going to disconnect everything. Right. So the basics that we need, it's here. This is the module that creates um, composite signal. You, have m you had many options before. That was the do-it-yourself option. That was the cheapest. The one that uh, we have an exhibition at the top, the visual cortex was like the pro uh, kind of thing. Then you had the video, that semi-modular. Uh, so you had many options for tran translating or generating the final output. Uh, I went with that one, the do-it-yourself, mostly because it's uh, space uh, saving. So I just have this little guy here. And then I send uh, red, green, and blue RGB. This is my matrix mixer, so it creates colors. So I can just connect one, send an oscillator to layer one, and then I can say, okay, it's going to be red but now suddenly it's going to be magenta or white, right? That's like the end of the workflow. And then how I go there, that depends on the day. Sometimes I use the matrix mixers because I can create um, uh, very simple routines over there. So that's what we had before. And then uh, need two more. Let's say like this, so I can. S 
have that one in red and that one in blue and I can in theory easily send a one to B exactly and now I'm mixing them don't worry about that that's that's not the point so workflow one thing I like to do a lot this uh, black one here from brown shoes only is a scanner so what it does is um, it's kind of a VCA if you know from um, audio world what, what the VCA is it's like shaping giving you the when in audio somehow so if you have a tone that you just listen to it's like a mm, and then you have a VCA that manipulates the amplitude so it's, you can make it no sound no output and then rise to an output and then go down again that's kind of a VCA so it's the when the sound is going out in video a VCA is more like where which part of the image is showing so this um, this guy here uh, is called a scanner from brown shoes only by the way I did a um, <laughs> I did a github repo with info that I didn't show you at the beginning, but um, it will be in the description of the video below. Um, so let's see, uh, we're going to use a ramp like before, right? So it goes <coughs> like the one that we had from black to red now, but we are going to make it like in the middle. So it goes one volt on the side, zero volts in the middle. That will be like where we are going to place the audio. Like I said, the VCA in video is where instead of when. So that will be our shape in the VCA, like our when, but now it's going to be what. And for the what or what we are going to show, I'm just going to go with the raw audio that I'm not getting I will just use that one so that guys when we said and now we have the where So the idea there, I'm going to make it white so we can see it clearly. You remember we had the whites on the side and in the middle was black. And this um, scanner, what it takes is one image that is going to be like the map, let's say. And then we have four inputs and we can tell to which part of the map we are going to place the other four inputs. So the, the, the one at the top is on the black side of the image. The one at the bottom is on the white side of the image, which is out of it somehow. This is a section of the gray. This is another section of the gray. This is the black part. Yeah? It's clear? So now if I take another part of the audio, I get middles and I I took the middles and then I place it in another part of the map. That map that was going from the middle to the sides. Now I have in the center, like the black of the map, is where I'm placing the bass sound in the um, um, in the next part of the gray I'm placing the middles and then I can place the high tones on the whiter part uh, it's not coming in very strongly yeah can you see the three different uh, sections so here you have the base low frequencies that means wider um, wider um, image, wider shapes, thank you, the grays, 
where I have the middle tones, meaning a little bit thinner shapes, and then the highs on the white areas of the map, meaning the very high frequencies, very detailed or very thin shapes. That's one workflow that I like to do a lot lately, like mapping uh, sounds to part of the image. And then, of course, that uh, initial image, that um, uh, gradient, if I use what we use at the beginning and mix it with another oscillator, then everything will shape. Let's do that for a second. So instead of saying, I can just show. Um, where am I going? So for example, let's use the passage output. We should be in the same place right now as we were. Exactly. And now I can connect a oscillator and mix it with the original image. And now we have a different result. And then if I, in that mix, now I bring again the audio, another part of the audio to modulate um, the oscillator then we will have even more audio reactivity inside. And of course, colorize. Yeah, that's one of the workflows I use a lot. There's mm, some users that use more shape uh, creation, so they create quadrilaterals and then they rotate them, um, create mirrors, so they appear to be twice and then uh, there's some people that use a lot of feedback, so sending the signal back in, and then it creates these very colorful, creepy images. So there's many, many ways of using the systems. Um, the same as in out. There's people doing techno, there's people doing experimental, so same thing. Questions? Or something you want to know? Yeah, there's, um, for making mirrors, for example, there's uh, a couple of things right now. Uh, there was this one coming, this chromanion that you will be able to see in, in Superbooth. There's this one uh, that I use a lot, this big one, um, Memory Palace. That's the digital um, sections uh, of this brand of LCX, the black ones. So it takes the images, and then it, they, ha they have like a little FPGA, like a small computer inside. And then you can do tricks that are very expensive to create in analog world. Like for example, that one, create mirrors and rotations. So for example, uh, the image is gone, but you saw for a second something weird happening. I don't know if you got that one, like very intricate. That was this one making feedback loops inside rotations or rotations inside feedback loops. But the one coming uh, Cromagnon, that's basically focus on that, on creating shapes and, and rotate them and that kind of uh, more shape specific uh, workflow. They will have a laser input and laser output. You can do HDs, it's another kind of crazy thing. Um, depends on, yeah, what you like, like, I, I like this one because it's very, um, performance oriented, it has many faders, I can just play big buttons, so the same with uh, Diver, um, yeah, the other one is more, uh, it's, I guess it will be also fine for performance, it's more, it's more like this here, like these guys with knobs a different different feeling. Are there any modules that allow you to like store like video samples and play them and 
no, uh, that's planned in in Eurorack, but that's not there yet. There's a lot of people now using, I don't know if you've seen them, the Raspberry Pis, these mini little computers running on Linux. Very cheap, 40 euros, something like this. And there's people creating software for them that you can download and use. Um, so Recure, R-E-C-U-R, is one of those. I will have it in the, um, in the GitHub repo. And um, there's from the same brand, from LCX, also one, LC, uh, one Raspberry Pi module that just have uh, the same. You can put loops inside and then play them back. Yeah, but that's uh, HDMI output or R or RCA. So then you will have you will need one module to take that input and create uh, the image. So now the one the most convenient way is just to have a computer outside of the system and just input stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. I did that for for a long time. Yeah, having a capture card, one hundred euro, you get uh, good quality. Take the uh, output from the system into your computer and then make effects and, and stuff over there. There's also some really old school uh, video effects. There's um, Cowspot, one of the first ones that can do video effects, but they sell for like 600 euro on eBay best. So yeah, there's also one um, Raspberry Pi project to make effects. So you can output from here, pass it into the Raspberry Pi, put some effects and then output to the projector. So yeah, there's a lot of uh, going on in the field actually. If but why why working with with analog scenes? I mean, I understand it's beautiful and yeah. fun, but is it really worth going into that world? Because right now, for example, with Lumen yeah. or like Lumen mixed with Resolum and yeah. other software, you can do way more. Yeah. And so why working in that way? Uh, well, depends on what you consider way more. Yeah. Like, um, there's much more options there, yeah, sure. But at the end of the day, for me, for example, I don't do more, I do less. Because there's so many options that I get lost and I don't focus and I don't get nice results with this. It's what I said at the beginning. I have a limited set of options. This is what I have and I have to just play with this. And that's something um, that it actually works for me personally. And I like um, as a concept as well, less is more at the end of the day. So for me, having so many options is, uh, is I'm getting lost. And as I said, I'm a software developer. So I was using software before I created my own software for Vision. And most of the time I was not Vision, but creating the software to play until five minutes before the show. And I didn't, yeah. So now it's, it's, a, it's a different experience. It's just. That. I don't but know if is, it there, is there anything that is actually special about like analog ones that you cannot do with the digital? Um, I guess the, the the tactile feeling, like I don't have to look anymore in the in the screen, in the in the keyboard on the screen and the mouse. I know where red is, so there's there's some memory muscle thing involved here, so it's it's more immediate somehow. That's what I mean with less is more. It's just it is there, it's like playing an instrument. I know where everything is. I know that three f um, the fourth fader from the right is my rotation. So I can just touch it, feel it, boom. It's a choice. It's not better or worse, for sure. Can you recall uh, a recent happy um, accident that you stumbled on Google Live, maybe in the studio? Um, really moved you. Yeah, I had uh, weird feedback going on because I didn't plug, it was live. I didn't plug where I wanted to plug, it was dark. I plugged it somewhere else and I saw that it, w it was looking amazing. And I didn't know <laughs> what was going on, so I had to uh, keep playing and, and just l overlook, like, what did I do? And it was like, I wanted to go, yeah, in a regular path from input to output, but I patch it back to, to the input and it did a feedback look that that one was nice and was looking was looking good. So yeah, serendipity also happens there. Of course you didn't hit the chord. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, that's an issue with me. I don't, I never press record. Yeah. So what are the 
basic modules you need if you have modular? That's a very good question. Uh, so you will need um, one that generates um, or transform from or encodes, that would be the right word, encodes the voltages into composite signal. That will be the minimum requirement. So if you get this one, do it yourself, it will cost you, I don't know, 150 euros or something. Then you can plug anything uh, in. So for example, what we did at the beginning, we plug audio signals from um, audio module directly into the red channel and we saw a red bar happening. So that will be the minimum. Um, in this system, do it yourself, you also need a sync generator is this second guy here that creates the sync pulses to be able to show it on the screen so those two will make you a system then um, in the one that we have here in, in the showroom you will you will see the um, visual cortex that was the um, entry point before like the pro entry point they don't sell it anymore now they're focusing on that chromanion so that will be your entry point from now on the chromanion I'm not sure if they are keep going to do the um, do it yourself, but um, but yeah. There's also not modular, but um, a guy called Hiskes in the Netherlands. He sells little devices that can translate audio into video. They're really nice. I have almost all of them, and they're super super nice Where to use. Hiskes, uh, Hiskes, yeah, G E. No, G I E S K E S dot N L. It's the weirdest website ever. And um, I'll have it in the in that document that I'm going to share with you. So uh, is this video going to be online? Yeah. Sure, of course. Yeah. Okay. So in the description. <coughs> Questions? Lots of notes. Yeah. Can you put backwards like uh, informing the sound from the video? Uh, yeah, you can also create sound from from this. Like um, as I said, the main difference, one of the differences between audio and video is that uh, video goes beyond audio in terms of frequency. So if you think about LFO audio, then comes video. If you think in that way, in terms of frequency. So those uh, vertical um, oscillators that I show you, those you won't hear it because uh, they are beyond what the ear can um, perceive. And also, uh, most of the equipment, like audio mixers and stuff, they won't they won't pass it through. We have filters to n to not pass that through because it's unwanted. Uh, the um, the horizontal um, oscillators you will hear. The thing is that it will not sound very. You know, it will be noise most of the time. But um, these his case um, device, for example, they do both. So they generate audio and video at the same time. So you will not crash your system if you use directly audio uh, inputs or not. Uh, the question is if so I. I can I crash my system, my, my models, if I do directly audio? No. 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 Okay. No, they have protection diodes inside. They have protections for that not to happen. So you won't break if you connect something wrong. No. Yeah, because I have a video and I did it often. Connect wrong? <laughs> yeah, no, just uh, did it uh, from audio directly into. Yeah, no, no, no. no. From audio. Yeah, yeah, no, that's yeah. fine. Okay. Yeah. How do you like the video? Yeah, I like it a lot, yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's a weird machine, but it's fun. Can we have it on the screen? Yeah, sure. Uh, take the yeah, just play it out. Oopsie. I think it's not available anymore now. Yeah, it's yeah, not available, but we have here, I think this is to sell, still here. This stays here. Yeah. Ah, okay, no. What's in the, in the showroom stays in the showroom. It stays <laughs> in the showroom, okay. Um, it's basically, um, it was created to perform um, feedback. So it has um, 
very a lot of inputs and a lot of outputs. So you will use it uh, with a camera. That was the intended um, uh, way. So you will have a camera as an input. Then you will have the output um, of the video, and you can point that camera to the output, create an, an analog feedback loop, and then tweak it inside the machine, and that will go as an output. Yeah, yeah, exactly. With oscilloscopes, people do it a lot as well. So it's those analog, uh, real analog, like through the air analog uh, feedback loops. And yeah, it's a nice play, nice little thing to play with. It has three sections. You have these two oscillators here on the top. Those are the ones we were using. You have a processing signal section, and then you have a colorizer section here. And how I use it, for example, is instead of using a camera for the feedback loop, I use a, um, that entrancer that I said, that house pad that can do video effects, and I put that in the loop. And then it, it creates another type of uh, more like a digital way of making the um, feedback loop. looks really nice. And in terms of shapes, uh, is it possible with the video? Yeah, the video has two oscillators on the top, and they make um, one is sync to horizontal, one is sync to vertical. And then there's a mixer section, like a fixed mixer section. So you will have outputs like this is logarithmic, so you will create uh, circles. This is like a diamond shape, this is cross shape. The cross, like we saw the mix of the two. If you mix it different, it will create a circle in the point where they both mix, they both encounter. Cool, I hope you like it. Yeah? And if Thank there's not much. any more questions, then... Well done. Thank you. Thank you.